Okay, so I'm going to answer a question that I received about how to know when to leave a relationship, right? Um, and I'll go into um, Nilu, into your question about, well, the ego is run by fear and desire. And so how do we know when we're just um, continuing an egoic pattern, right? Wherever you go, you take yourself with you. And there's this teaching that, well, if you leave somewhere, you're just going to attract the same exact thing um, in a different form, which is true. If it's if you leave because you haven't seen um, the parts of yourself that attracted that to begin with. So wherever you go, there you are, right? So in when it comes to relationship... Sometimes we are so lost in, um, so um, familiar with certain patterns, maybe it's codependency, maybe it's um, an identity as the savior or as playing a certain role within the relationship. Maybe we're so blinded by our own deep fears that we won't make it on our own or if we get out of this relationship, we'll be naked and we'll have to feel all the feelings that we truly feel, right? We'd have to confront the parts of ourselves that um that create our reality right maybe parts of us that feel very incapable very helpless maybe parts of us that really feel like we weren't designed to thrive so if you are not in an abusive relationship right if you are in an abusive relationship get out of the relationship go go find safety right be worthy to to feel safe and i understand that sometimes um, abuse is so familiar to us that that's all we know it doesn't even occur to us that we can leave but leave right if it even occurs to you as an option leave but if that's not the situation you're in so I was asked how I knew to leave a situation and I'll tell you how it went down what I learned and ultimately how I discovered how this really works so I had a very strong desire to understand how I was creating my part of the relationship that I was in. Um, and ultimately, if you feel like a victim, you will attract a bully because we attract people who amplify how we feel about ourselves. So, and ultimately, you know, he had a victim mentality as well and I bullied him in certain situations. And so I had to grow up and realize like my reactive nature, like I need to take care of that. So very early on in my relationship with him, um, I decided that I would stop raising my voice. So that's first. So in order to be able to be aware of the way life is moving, right? The way life is moving. So that we're not just in our ego in fear and desire, right? Fear and desire that's on top of the current of life that may be calling you this way, maybe calling your partner another way. Before you can come into that clear awareness, you have to kind of take care of the layers on top that prevent you from, or that make you kind of deaf to that, that calling. So in my case, um, I was very reactive uh, when I met him, and I knew it. And even though he was difficult to communicate with, like, I thought that raising my voice was the answer to get him to hear me, and, and I stopped. I was like, no, I'm going to have to not do that um, and see and let myself actually feel these feelings arise in me, which for me was a great amount of heat. That's why I talk about emotional transmutation a lot because I've transmuted very intense energy. Um, so for me, the first step was, okay, I know that the way that I am reacting is a belief I have about myself. Before I even got to the beliefs though, it's, it was just being with that raw energy. So I would let myself be triggered. And at first I couldn't be still with the emotion. So I would say, I'm going for a walk. I'm going for a walk. Instead of continuing that karmic pattern, karma being my identification that has beliefs, that has thoughts and feelings and actions, instead of letting that move through me, I'd stop it and I'd say, I'm gonna go for a walk, okay? I can't talk right now. But then as I got, as the as presence became 
fuller experience for me, right? There was more space, more room within me to feel. I, I made my practice like feeling what would come up within me and I would let the energy be there, arise and diffuse. And somebody mentioned in a comment, the book, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. That's the perfect book to learn all about that perfect it it's not described better than that um and so what happened was after all of that noise right started to clear um I started seeing what was underneath that noise which was like wow I had a lot of beliefs about myself I held on to a situation for a long time um and so, well, before I get go there, I'm going to say, like, there's this teaching, focus on the positive aspects, and, and absolutely, right? First of all, everything is you. <laughs> and so it's actually a loving miracle that you and you are together in order to mirror certain things to yourself, in order to interact with yourself in a certain way. And just the, the sheer beauty of that is amazing. But if you focus on somebody's positive aspects, I remember my... I remember the person I was with later after I left him said, I remember when you started doing that, like he found a journal prompt that I wrote and he cried and he, he remembered noticing that um, around that same time when I was really focusing on him as appreciating him, he started to change his, um, he started to change, he started to realize some of the ways he was stuck in were not, uh, real we're not um kind right we're not honest and so but see the end of my story is not that we ended up together the end of my story is that we separated even though the vibration raised so as i you know raising your vibration yeah you can't you have to stop making someone else wrong you have to stop blaming others you have to realize that what you're projecting onto them is your own how you're reacting is impressions that are in your mind and you have to learn how to diffuse that energy but also raising your vibration and i i made another video i may do another one because i don't know if i posted it on youtube but i made a video explaining what tuning to your source means um which is not just source energy which is like nuclear love and just this nuclear energy right that's true but it's also your source, the way source is flowing as you. Your source, meaning what I'm called to, what I, what's real for me, what I really want to do and what I don't want to do, what I don't feel like doing, what I do feel like doing. So what I had to do, right, because I had awakened, I had an awakening basically at the exact same time that I got married. And he started saying, oh my God, you're not the person I married. You know, I changed very quickly. I stopped going out socially. I stopped drinking. I never I never was a drinker, but I used to make myself pretend in order to have friends, in order to um, show up at certain professional events. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I won't do it anymore. And so tuning to your source is honoring what's real for you. So what happens is as I go to this event and I honor my desire to meditate and I honor my, the way I want to spend my morning and I honor, um, you know, I'm going to go to this event and travel here and do this event and all the things that really like lit me up and like made me happy and joyful, whether it was going on certain trips alone, going to workshops, seminars, like, I honored what was real for me. He honored what was real for him. And that just naturally took us like this. We don't have the same values. We don't have the same lifestyle. We are not compatible on pretty much any level other than the fact that we do love each other. But compatibility, compatibility, values, like all of that matters very much. The human dimension matters very much. And that doesn't mean that we need to be with people who are exactly like us, but so raising your vibration, right? When you're in a relationship, what that actually means, right? It's not that you're more and more and more in, in love and positive necessarily. Although I will say that by me doing that, by me deciding that I'm not going to focus on negative qualities and even, and when you have an awakening, like, negative qualities don't really make sense to you in the sense that that's just a story and like their god showing up and however they were 
natured and nurtured like it wasn't their fault so it doesn't compute to make them wrong right but that doesn't mean they don't trigger you and so when you're triggered you have to learn how to feel the energy and so once all of these reactive energies like start clearing up then you can see what's underneath it which is wait a minute no matter how much i change my attitude and this may or may not be you no matter how much i change my attitude no matter whether what i focus on or what i don't focus on like there's just something underneath that like life energy what i'm talking about just like knowing is underneath emotion it's underneath your attitude it's just a knowing it's just a knowing that this is not compatible life-giving it feels off right you don't even have access to that until you stop blaming and until you decide to feel your emotions but you don't even have access to that. Now, once you get here, right, all sorts of new fears can come up like, well, all right, I see that I am actually deeply uncomfortable in this relationship. Why am I holding on? Well, at least in my case, I had a whole lot of beliefs about myself. Like I can't, I used to have this belief like, well, the way that I am, my constitution, you know, the way I'm built, like, I'm not like an alpha type of person. I don't, I'm not a hustler. And I believe that that's what I needed. And the I needed that energy in my life in order for me to have a certain lifestyle or for me to be able to survive, right? I thought like, I'm so delicate and this and that, and I will never make it. And these are all just beliefs, right? So I'm just listening to myself like a book. I discovered how much I actually depended on that person for certain things in my life um, and I was avoiding like this sense of like oh this sense of aloneness this sense of like parts of me not knowing that they are the whole universe that um, parts of me that felt very a lot of despair about the prospect of not getting what what they think they want right whether it's this home whether it's to have babies right um, you know, I was prepared to have children, like, right before I found out, uh, that I was going to leave him. Um, so it was very sad for me to say, to confront, like, okay, that might not happen at all, or at least not for a while. Um, and so I was avoiding these things, right? I was avoiding, you know, um, a lot of pain that I had, a lot of beliefs I had about myself surrounding the idea that I was incapable that um, basically it was kind of like a sugar daddy mentality of like, and it's funny because I was, I always fancied myself an independent woman. I was a lawyer. I know I'm capable. I know I'm smart. I know I'm creative. And, but other parts of me had very different beliefs. Like, no, I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to have a man take care of me. I'm going to have... Um, my well-being is, go is going to come from the outside, right? That's my source. That's my source. That's my source. So basically parts of me not knowing that they are source. And so just that process of deconstruction of like, wow, seeing really how deeply on many levels believing I'm some sort of an invalid who is completely incapable of flowing energy and meanwhile, consciously, I'm teaching flowing energy and I'm, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm a channel. I'm a, an energy healer. I, I had done a lot of healing and transmuting of energy and I've had, I had had deep awakenings at that time in my life. But yet there were still all these deep beliefs that were revealed to me in relationship. And so I got what I wanted because I told the universe, I want to know why I attracted this. So... <laughs> And let me tell you, I saw all the beliefs that were in my mind. Um, probably not all of them, but I've seen what I've seen so far and it has been very liberating, right? The fact that parts of me expected that my well-being and that my source is outside of me. So basically, what one of the things I want to say is that raising your vibration is not just being positive, but actually maybe doing that positive work brought me to the the place where I could actually become aware of what was actually binding me to the situation, right? Was that what was actually binding me, what was actually uh, what attracted to myself a certain kind of 
abusive situation, a certain kind of deceptive situation, which is self-deception, right? The universe is holographic. I have a video called self-deception, like how to spot it and clear it. You know, with self-deception is basically knowing something and and ignoring it. And before I got married, let me tell you, I knew it and I ignored it. And again, what I ended up learning through the process of that relationship that I had was by far my greatest teacher, by far a greater teacher than any mystical experience I've had. Well, or I'd say they're equal because the amount of light that came in gave me access to the amount of darkness, right? It's all one. Um, and so again, at the end of the day, it's still all perfect. But <clears throat> I'm a person who has really learned a lot by trial and error. And I believe that you can learn by awareness, right? Like Abraham Hicks calls it pre-manifestational awareness or post-manifestational awareness. You know, if your soul is really, really wants you to learn a lot in a short amount of time, you might manifest like a big situation like I did to show you all the deep layers of the strings that hold it together. But in general, like I teach people how to get back in their body, how to become aware of what's real for them so that it's not so much, right, a process, life is not so much a a process of like being bulldozed and then cleaning yourself up and being bulldozed and there's nothing wrong with that it's just for me it, and if you resonate with me like maybe you're, you would resonate with this I'm kind of tired of that way of creating right I want to create with more ease so if you're in a relationship right don't focus on the person's negative qualities there are no others but also don't ignore what's real for you, right? If if something is going on that no matter what you do with your attitude, right? Sometimes doing attitudinal work is a form of avoidance. Um, sometimes it's a form of practice that gives you access to your real beliefs and feelings about a situation. Do what's real for you. That's all I can say. Like, do what's real for you. Like, if you've attracted a teaching like Abraham Hicks, if you've attracted right and it resonates with you go go into it totally go into it totally pour yourself into it um that's what i did i was at one with myself i was at one you know i did that abraham work right you know because i had already had an awakening to myself but my mind wasn't positive all the time my mind was doing what it was doing so i decided to uh, become more engaged with the mind process, right? Then I, eventually I just, that kind of disappeared and I kind of just, uh, deeper layers of the mind started revealing themselves to me and I just have been watching as those layers disintegrate and show me the next layer and the next layer and the next layer, something called like constructs, right? Deep, deep beliefs that we have about ourselves. So basically, when you honor yourself, Okay, when you honor yourself, like in the situation I was in, I put my foot down kindly. Communicate kindly, right? You don't have to use dissatisfaction or hatred or blame as a way to get you away from something. That's a child that's a childish perspective that believes I need to, you know, fight against that big person who's trying to boss me around. Like nobody's bigger than you. And maybe you're in a relationship, you know, with an abusive man who is bigger than you. Maybe you should get away. Okay? But in general, when we use dissatisfaction and we use hatred and we use stories about the narcissism of others and how bad others are, we have an unconscious belief that we have to explain how bad something is in order to get away from it when the truth is that we have a choice to engage with it or not. And so if you're married, right, and it's not that simple, like maybe you have kids, maybe you have whatever, maybe you, it's not that simple for you. W what makes it simple is dial into what is real for you. Right. I know so many people that, you know, they they commit to especially people who are healing from uh, disease. Right. They commit to like inner work and to, you know, consciousness studies and they just go all in and their partners are like they can't get into it. And then some of them, sometimes they get inspired. Sometimes the two can just agree to not need to be into the same thing and they enjoy each other even more um but sometimes you know that just natural like following of what's real for you will take you this way and then the other person will just go that way and that's it 
And it, that's really that simple. It's where, what is real for you? What is called? Where are you called? And you may very well be called to like what in my experience feels like a sacrifice, right? Like saying yes to something that I don't like doing. Like I remember there were times when randomly, you know, when I don't like going out late or having drinks, like I would randomly feel a yes inside and I would, and I would listen to it, right? So I don't make anything a rule, like I will never do this and I will never, I, I allow myself to be available to the moment. And so, yeah, sometimes I would say yes and then I would meet some amazing person, right? I lived in Peru, I met an amazing girl who introduced me to an old woman who was really good friends with Louise Hay. <laughs> that was really cool. And that was because I said yes that day. Um, so it's like be available to what is real for you and if you do that with kindness right you don't need the propeller of dissatisfaction or unkindness to get you away from something but you just honor where life is taking you right you just honor where life is taking you like i i remember hearing a story of this woman like had the perfect life um, she was living in I think maybe Italy and she had like all these properties she and her husband in Europe and they had this wonderful life and but it's it, she felt like she was dying inside she, it was almost like if she didn't leave the situation she would have physically imploded or something that's how I felt <laughs> that's how I knew I was at the point where you know the prospect of buying a home with this person or having a child with this person um it made me no it didn't feel right so depending on where you are you know like i said it's realizing nobody's to blame realizing there are no others it's all a perfect co-creation taking the opportunity to diffuse your reactions and you know once those emotional layers have been kind of allowed then you can have access to what's underneath which is maybe a deeper knowing like okay no matter what i do with my attitude like still doesn't feel right or maybe when you're no longer seeing through your reactive eyes now you're in a whole new universe where you can attract new aspects out of that person which i think is absolutely beautiful i've had that experience with other people in my life right in that situation the the physical relationship ended but in other situations like the the relationships mutate and so remember, you, the universe is you and the universe is holographic. So it's like, what is inside of you? Like if you are attracting relationships that are amplifying, like if, if, you, if you attract people who challenge you all the time, who doubt you all the time, like you doubt yourself, you challenge yourself, you don't accept yourself. You don't accept that you're a unique emanation from the mind of God, that you are what you are and it's like your constitution and your form is actually is perfect and and it might not fit into society but it's perfect right like once you know that like those those fragments tend to disappear because the if everything is 99.9999999 empty space the the way that the characters show up in your life is actually fragments of your own psyche that are being projected onto that empty space Okay, that's a little it's a little more out there, but practically speaking, right? Raise your vibration, tune into what's real for you. Don't be unkind. Learn how to communicate with love. Anything can be said with love. No, you know what? I'm not really feeling doing that right now. Like feel free to do what you want to do or maybe you know, I need to go for a walk right now. I'm feeling really disturbed. Learn how to take your emotional reactions and bring them through your heart before you speak and then when those reactive patterns have calmed down it's like when you look through a lake all that noise has gone and you can see what's at the bottom what's at the bottom might be life is taking you that way or it could be life is right here and you have a whole new life with the same person and so the questioner also asked me how I knew to walk away from law school I actually didn't walk away from law school I stayed in law school um, I passed the bar, I was a lawyer for a few years, and um, all I can say about that is like appreciate everything you've ever done, right? Whatever, any career you've ever had, you are life, right? Every turn you've ever taken has been part of your evolution. So for me, um, going to law school really trained my mind to be able to assimilate 
lots of information and to make me a better communicator. Um, it trained my mind to, to it, it also trained my communication skills. It trained my logic, my practicality, my ability to see every side. Like, it's actually a great, I mean, everybody would benefit from going to law school because of the practicality of what you learn. Um, and so it helped me tremendously do what I'm doing right now, which is explaining things to you, right? I take lots of data from the universe, vibrations, and I, I share it hopefully in a way that it's easy to understand because I know I, I listen to lots of those YouTube videos about like, how do you know if you leave the relationship or not? <laughs> and um, you know what I'll say? We always know you're right. If you've Googled it a thousand times, you probably know the answer to that question, but so I meditated on that, right? I meditated on that for a while and boy, I got an answer. And the way that I found the ability to be able to leave and to be able to see the beliefs that held me, that kept me stuck there was that I continued my meditation practice. I continued being aligned with what was real for me. I continued transmuting my reactions. I, com I, I communicated with love. Um, and ultimately that led me back to wholeness, right? Oh, I, like I no longer am in a relationship, but it's like I feel whole because I realized that all of my ideas and beliefs about myself, about how incapable I felt and how weak and helpless and, and like uh, how disconnected parts of me felt from life and from true power which is the knowledge that we are life and that we are love and that we do create our reality and the quantum nature of reality like the parts of me that were disconnected from that were holding me in a situation which was ultimately not healthy for me um, and I went through an extreme experience you could say to to be able to learn that so and I'm not saying you know whether or not you have to do that too go through an experience in order to get it like that's not good or bad um part of my intention in teaching what I teach is so that we can have a bit more of the awareness of what we're doing before um before we suffer even more right and I'm again sometimes that suffering is the greatest lesson sometimes we go even deeper into what we understand about ourselves but I am at least I'm a proponent of learning through awareness and with ease and with less like bulldozing and picking myself up bulldozing and picking myself up that seems like an inefficient use of energy in a way to me right so um yeah, the law school thing, right? That was a perfect part of my path. Everything that has ever been in your life has been a perfect part of your path. Nilu, I hope I answered your question. I hope other people benefit from my answer. Um, and I hope you have a beautiful day.